Hey guys, welcome back to Jay's Speed Shop. So today uh, we're going to do a little, uh, I guess, lawnmower maintenance uh, repairs. So let me kind of flip this around. I'll show you what we got. Um, but we're going to work on the Toro lawn riding mower. And then we've got a trailer that goes with it that uh, we're going to see if we can get going again. So anybody who, uh, I think I had this in the previous video I did on this lawn riding mower. I got bought from a neighbor last year. So you can see the mower deck and it's, yeah, I'm going to do is try to extend the life of this thing. Hopefully, you know, I can uh, repair this. My goal is to be able to maybe pop rivet or epoxy some metal. I'm going to try and cut some metal to the right size and form it and be able to kind of somehow get it on there. I'm a little leery of trying to weld to this thing because it's so crunchy that much and it's thin and I'm not, not that skilled at welding yet to, I, and I really don't want to ruin the deck. I've looked. I can't see where you can find the replacement deck for these. The rest of the mower is in pretty decent shape and runs good. i got a couple little things to do, but you can see it's kind of there. Even right up to the edge there of the mulching guard has got some rust. So let's do our best we can to, you know, maybe I'll play around trying to weld a little bit like up on that piece there. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and then on the other side, it's got some rust bubbles. So I'm going to try and grind that paint off and see what we got underneath there. Um, a little bit here on the edge too. So hope I can maybe just kind of get this little part cleaned up and then this feels pretty solid. It's, it's kind of like wrinkles. I don't know if that's rust or if that's just something else, but um, trying to fix those couple spots. And then after I bought the tractor, Last I was mid last summer, got it going. Uh, neighbor came over and said, "Hey, I forgot I have this trailer back in the backyard." And so I made just a little Craftsman you know, plastic trailer dump trailer. I don't know that I'll use it that much, but it might come come in handy for doing a project when we need more than one thing. Um, so the tires are shot; they're dry rotted. They don't hold air. The beads broke. Um, you know, I thought maybe they were saveable, but I'm looking at this one. It's all cracked and stuff from sitting there flat. So no use putting too much time in. Problem is this one is frozen. The the rim is frozen to the axles. These are plastic rims, but they appear to be rusted to the, uh, maybe there's a metal sleeve on the inside probably, but currently rusted to the uh, axles. That one won't turn. So this one at least turns a little bit. They don't have a place to grease them or anything like that either. So thinking that these are kind of sort of standard just wheelbarrow type tires, I hope. They kind of look about the right size for that. Although now I'm looking at these rims. It's not quite the right because they, they have different offsets on each side. So probably not a wheelbarrow. I don't know. I'm going to go up to tractor supply. I'm going to take try to get these off. Take them up the tractor supply, see if I can get something that comes close. Worst case, if I can get that one off without breaking the rim, then I'll just get a uh, new get new tires. Um, so I can find replacement tires for it. I don't know if these have tubes in them or not. It doesn't. But uh, so anyways, so we're gonna do that, and then we got uh, the tractor's got uh, an oil leak, which I think is mostly. I think it just leaks at the plug. Drain plug in the where were the drain plug? Oh, actually, no, I, that's right. It leaks, I believe, at the dipstick tube there. It may leak from the from the plug itself too. Um, but that will we'll change the oil and put a uh, uh, put some Teflon on that. And we'll put it back in. But I think I had taken this off when I had the motor apart to get the mouse nest out of it. And you can you can see it kind of when you wiggle it, it's not sealing down there. So, oops, can you see that? there you can see it bubbling when i just wiggle it so definitely does not have a good seal there so we'll get that fixed it's probably just an o-ring or something and then uh that won't leak it is right now it leaves a, i gotta put a piece of cardboard under in the garage or it leaks a little bit here i'm gonna try to get these off this one shouldn't be too bad because it's got this cotter keys it's holding it on We'll 
Oh, so maybe it is kind of like a wheelbarrow. Well, it's still not quite perfect offset. You can see it's deeper in that side. This piece here is the axle is a little rusty, but this rides on plastic though. Sorry, you can't see over here, but same same process except for this one. Of course, it turns the wrong way. So kind of keys out now. If I get something other than maybe trying that, we'll see if it'll that's not too bad. Move at least. There we go. Wasn't too bad. So what we'll do is once uh figure out what the new wheel situation is or if we can uh get tires for these wheels or whatever. Clean up this rust. Actually hoping to get new metal wheels versus these plastic ones that have maybe a grease fitting on them, so you can actually grease these things. And this, you know, this thing sat outside, leaned up against the back of a, a barn just like this, so, okay. Nice. Right, so it's a part. As we get some tires, not for highway use. 4.0-6, so look kind of like basic standard, uh, at least the tires do, like a uh, wheelbarrow type tire. So I'm thinking tractor supply will have something. So if I can get an actual rim, that'd be great. I'll measure how thick this, uh, how wide that is. Those appear. I can't pick it up on the camera, but it does appear there's a little bit of a crack, hairline crack in the fiberglass, which means this probably won't last real long. I mean, kind of waited on But who knows, it could, could be cracked like that for years too. I don't think it's ever really got used that much by my neighbor. Well, actually, there's a spot that almost looks like, like it's, I can't pick that up, but it almost looks like there's a spot where you put a grease fitting. Nothing there. It's not thread, but it's like a little, maybe it's just a drain hole in case moisture gets in the axle, it drains out or something. But I think if we clean these axles up, which doesn't even be just put some grease on them. Interesting, the spacers are different. Very interesting. I don't know if this is right or not, but there's a narrow spacer and wide spacer, and then a narrow spacer here and a wide spacer here. Sort of makes me think that no, there's not really between these two pieces which bolt on the center of the tongue, you couldn't get two wides, and then if you had two, it's interesting. I don't know why it's like that, but it all works out. But anyways, we'll clean up the axles and I guess we'll first of all see if I can make sure I can get tires for it and we'll go from there. So this is what I got to uh, hopefully patch that. So I got a sheet of 22 inch, or 22 gauge, I'm sorry, 6 by 24 just from Home Depot. I may 
Oh, I definitely have to get another sheet because this will be enough to do one side probably. And what I did is I made a cardboard template, just taped two pieces of cardboard, cut them to the size so I can use these because what as it goes around the mower deck, it's hard to see here, but it'll make this curve this way, but it, it's going to be, as you try and fold it over the curve around the top, it's going to be pie cut a little bit. So my plan is, and see if it works, is to try and kind of make a template with the cardboard, do the cuts I need to do, and then I can lay it on the sheet metal and, and then uh, cut that the right way. So it kind of, as it rolls over, it, uh, it works. I also got a piece of, this is a uh, 16 gauge, it's a lot thicker, um, be a lot harder to do the bends. Now it's probably closer to what the right gauge is. So we'll see if I uh, decide to uh, try to go mow the thicker stuff, we'll see. Uh, goes probably depends if I'm going to try and weld or not. I was thinking if I can go all the way down, I'll show you what I was thinking here. If I can get at the bottom here, this lip is pretty solid. So if I can, what I'm thinking on this one, I'm going to it's we got rust starting right about here and kind of goes to here all the way back to about here. And basically, this. see that one piece is just about enough to do it and not that it has to be one piece i guess but and then but then as we wrap it around up to the top it's going to have to be cut in some a few probably four to five places to get it to kind of lay the way we want it to go so this cardboard is actually a little bit thick for trying to do this but it's all i could find laying around tonight so I think what we'll do is tomorrow night or another night, I'll come out here and I'll grind this rust, this paint off and the rust and just to get a feel for how bad it is. But I was thinking if I can get it down into the screw, though, that's going to be hard to clean that up. But I should have got a little sander that might get in there. And then we had to wrap it up here to where it's still pretty solid. Maybe we could do some pretty, uh, we could actually weld it on. Be good practice welding. I think the thicker steel would be better if I can get it to bend the way I want it to bend. So we'll see. See how much of this is left once I start because I definitely have a hole there. This seems pretty loose. Definitely have a little bit of a hole there. This stuff up here doesn't feel too crunchy. So maybe we can get uh, clean it up and paint it and maybe it'll hold on for a while. So at some point I'm going to have to get a new mower. This one, again, my other one needed some work. The neighbor had this one in his garage, and it was uh, hadn't run in, I don't know, probably seven, eight years. And we got it going. It runs pretty good. Cuts nice. So that's, and that's why I didn't fix my other one. I didn't like the way it cut. It was an old snapper. It was probably a way better mower than this. It was pretty heavy duty. Easy to work on. But I needed to replace the rear axle shields and all that, and it, uh, which was doable. But in the end, I didn't like, never really liked the way it cut. I don't know if it was too heavy for its size and or for the size of tire, but it just never seemed like it cut very even. And uh, maybe because it was a single blade, where you know one, it was a thirty-inch blade, I think. Where this one's got thirty is thirty-eight, but it's two blades. <clears throat> So anyways, if I can get a couple more years out of this one, great. At some point, you know, I've I've never bought a new riding mower, so maybe at some point I'll actually fork out the money and buy a new one. Just most of these modern ones, or unless you're gonna go pay five grand, most of these ones you buy at Home Depot and stuff for two grand are pretty chintzy, just like this where the the mower decks rot out and you know, and it, you could do per, take precautions to clean up under there and you know try and make it last longer and get all the wet grass that's stuck out underneath it out of there. But, you know, just the reality is most people don't have time to do that when they get them mowing. They're off to the next chore. So anyways, uh, we'll continue on another night here and I'll run to the store tomorrow and get some, uh, try and get some tires and whatever I need to get this thing going. Okay, so let me show you what I did on the trailer. So um, early in the video, we were pulling off these old tires and wheels. Uh, 
tires are dry rotted. They're sat flat for years. Um, got a lot of cracking in the sidewalls and stuff. Um, where the bead was off on them. I also noticed that these, these wheels are plastic. I noticed that there were a lot of hairline cracks on the hub. And rather than trying to find new tires, I mean, I found tires that would have fit this and tubes. Um, what I did is I went to Tractor Supply and I picked up some, some new tires for it. Now these ones are, I'm not exactly sure if they're for a trailer or what they're for, but uh, slightly taller, not much. Um, they're, they don't have either solid tire, solid rubber. Um, so don't have to worry about them holding air. You know, I'm not going to use this thing for anything super heavy duty. Um, what it came down to why I picked these ones, I would have gone with the ones that held air, except, uh, tractor supply had nothing in stock that would fit. This is a three quarter inch axle. If it was a five eighths inch axle, lots of options. I could have gotten basically something looked just like that, but with a metal wheel, um, even though it had maybe even had a grease fitting, which these ones don't have a grease fitting, <clears throat> neither did the old ones. But the uh, nothing with the five eighths axle that would, um, that would, uh, the nothing with the five eighths axle, or sorry, with a three quarter axle. This one, this is a three, lots of five eighths options. Could have gotten something very similar to this in a 5 eighths. Could have gotten pretty much the exact replacement for that in a 5 eighths, but they didn't stock it. So, and I kind of looked on Amazon real quick. I didn't see anything jumping out at me there, at least for no better price than what these were like 40 bucks a piece. Um, the only thing was that the offset, you can see these old ones have a, I guess, a offset that's, you know, there, and then it's kind of, deeper on this side. It's four inch or whatever it is. I just used a screwdriver measure, but it's about four inches, three inches, three and a half inches of, you know, is the depth here. These have the same depth. So they, cause there's really no extra space on the axle, um, but they're perfectly centered. So I knew they were gonna, my concern was they were gonna come too close to this and they were pretty close. They would have worked. Um, but when I took the, was work on this, I noticed there's these spacers, these plastic spacers that go here. There's one there, one here, one here, and one there. And the way this was put together originally, it had a, a wide spacer over here, and then had a narrow spacer and a wide spacer on the side of this. Is, this is basically the tongue of the trailer, which you would expect these would be the same size, and then had a skinny one over here. And so it seems like you should have two of the same size on your side there, and then two of the same size out by the wheels. So what I did is actually, First of all, I switched them so the two wide ones were in the middle, which seemed to work about right. And then what I ended up doing was trimming them down a little bit. They're not quite perfect. This one's slightly wider than that one, but I ended up trimming one of them down a little bit so that I had a little bit more room on the axle on the outside edges to be able to put some washers. And then what those washers do is then space out the wheels so that I get and pick up an extra, I don't know, quarter of an inch, maybe half an inch. Of spacing. What I was worried about was if there these there was a load on these. Again, with this being a plastic bag, can't load it up that heavy. But if these if the sidewall is deflected, maybe it would end up rubbing here. So now I think I have just enough uh, space. I can get room to get my cotter key on each end. Uh, had to unbolt this. Not a big deal, but had to take all these bolts off so I could pop the uh, pop these spacers off. The axle's got so much service rust, it's really hard to move it back and forth. And it's kind of rusty inside though, there as well. But I mean, it's just pitted and whatever. It'll be fine. It's going to sit outside anyway. But what I'll do is I'll tighten this down and I'll take the wheels back off and grease the ends of the axles real good and get as much grease inside the hubs as I can. I wish these did have uh, figs on them. It'd be nice if they were, but they don't have it. And um, I suppose there's a way you could probably try and drill and tap and put one in, but honestly not worth it as much as this would probably actually get used. I have a wheelbarrow too. I mean, this is not something I would have gone out and bought, but when I bought the mower, my neighbor threw the trailer in too. And, uh, but you know, nice to have for doing projects around the yard. If you've got multiple people working, one can use the tractor and drag this thing around. And uh, so that's yeah, so all we're going to do is pop these wheels back off, grease them, tighten up all the bolts. And I think we'll call the, the trailer rebuild down. I got a new, uh, new pin, pull pin for the uh the hitch pin because that was all 
bent up and it was kind of a small one. So I got a little bit bigger one and new cotter keys for the outside and new tires. And this thing should be as good as new. Yeah, we got our wheels installed. So uh, ended up actually going with only one spacer on the back. Still gets plenty of clearance. Uh, a lot of the wheels, the wheels were like binding a little bit. Um, so we took this basically free uh, cart, added about $80 worth of parts. You, I was looking, you can buy basically this identical cart still through, uh, and this one's probably easily 20 some years old, if I had to guess. Um, you can buy these same carts through uh, like Northern Tools today. Um, same dimensions, very, very similar design, and they're about 150 bucks. So I figure by the time you pay tax and shipping and whatever, you're probably close to 100, 160 bucks, 180 bucks on it. Um, so for 40 or for 80 bucks, we got this one going again. It's good for another 20 years, probably. Um, if we hadn't replaced the rims, we could have probably been um, probably less than, uh, and if the tires hadn't sat flat for so long when can cracked, we probably could have, you know, done this thing for 20 bucks, um, just putting some tubes in it. Um, the, uh, but overall, it'll be good. Uh, we'll give it a, a try here in the summer and uh, do a few projects around the house with it. Okay, so this is the pack of uh, replacement uh, seals for the dipstick tube on the lawn tractor. So this is the one that came out of it. So it looks much identical. The difference is this new one uh, fits much snugger on the, uh, on the dipstick tube. And then you can see it's actually threaded and it actually threads it down into the, uh, into the block on the engine. So the engine block has threads that match. And so this threads down and then you stick the uh, dipstick tube in, but where before it was kind of wobbly and loose in there, now it's nice and snug. So hopefully it'll seal for a while. This one doesn't look damaged at all. I think it's just years of uh, being soaked in oil. It's just kind of, you know, deformed or worn a little bit and this didn't seal anymore. So, yep. Thinking this was, cause this is, this uh, dipstick tube goes in right above the plug for the, uh, uh, draining the oil and I originally thought the plug was just dripping but then I once I looked a little closer I saw it was leaking around the seal it was probably just the seal I'll pipe a little Teflon on the uh, on the plug as well but that should take care of it okay so what we're gonna do I ground a few spots off and you can kind of see where it's starting to rust through um, yeah we got another spot here and then the big hole on the other side that I showed you so what I'm gonna do I think I'm just take the deck off and that way I can kind of inspect the underside real good. And probably what I'm going to do is at least wire wheel it and put a good coat of uh, rust preventative paint on there to maybe help make this thing last a little longer. And then I guess maybe the first thing is just make sure this thing's even worth trying to save. If if I find that the whole underside's really, you know, a year away from being like this, then maybe I'll do just the bare minimum possible. But it looks like it's pretty easy to take off. Just got to pull the... Uh, this pin, which is what holds the deck to the, I guess I'll call it the hanging mechanism. This pin, which will remove the, uh, these are the struts that go up to the, I guess those are the struts that it pivots on when it, when it goes up, but basically it's this whole mechanism when you hit the adjuster. These are all the parts that make that work. And then Need to take off two screws. It looks like they're about five sixteenths. It'll take all these covers to come off so I can get the belt off. Um, two big, I don't know, probably three quarter inch bolts up here. Hold the front of the deck on, one on each side. These same, these same two pins on the other side. And then there's a cable, if you can see it over here, that is what engages the clutch in the motor deck. So that's got to get disconnected somehow. So once I get everything else loosened up, I'll slide it out that direction a little bit and see what I can do. But that should, uh, once we get it off, then we can kind of totally assess, assess how bad the damage is on this thing and whether uh, it's worth trying to save or not. So we're just going to pull those parts off and take a look at it. Okay, just to show you on this side. So we got it disconnected. The plastic cover... On the pulley on this side, it actually has three screws, one there, there, and there. And they're kind of buried under the loose grass or while the vacuum is up. And then the last thing to get this to slide out is we're just going to pull that ring off of the spring. 
and then we'll set the back off this adjusting nut here on the cable and we should be able to slide the mower deck out just to, you know beware on these rear attachments once i took the last piece off it was spring loaded so it kind of pulled itself up against the belly of the tractor so it might make it interesting trying to put it back together but it wasn't that like that forceful of the spring back so probably a too too bad but here you can see this is our worst damaged area that uh, we're gonna have to deal with and uh, i see there's a little bit more right here so i don't know it'll be interesting at least there i could probably just take one like a fairly these curves are gonna be a little bit tougher unless i do it in two pieces and kind of box it out i'm still debating again i and if i have to weld it i'm not a uh, not a really a welder and definitely not on this thin of metal no, this isn't too bad, but I don't know. So this piece, I could just kind of fold the piece over from down at the rail up and, and tack it in place, I think. Although it's kind of up even in this uh, ridge here is pretty crusty. So I don't know. We'll see when I uh, get this apart and, you know, maybe it's this thing's not even savable at this point. And uh, if that's the case, then uh, I guess I'll be shopping for another uh, another mower. But we'll see. Okay, so I did kind of just the first round of scraping, getting some of the big chunks out. Obviously, a long way to go. I'm going to probably take a wire wheel to it. Um, you can see you know, we got some pinholes there. And I, those are probably a little bigger than pinholes. Obviously, this is our worst area here. There's a couple of areas back here that are, it's coming through on the other side. So then there's big chunks. Um, so what we're going to do, I already took the uh, mulch kit off, took the blades out. I'm going to take these little, I don't know what these things do exactly, but these little corner things, there's four of those. I'm going to take those out. Those are Phillips head screws from the top side of the deck. And then I'm going to take, try to take this bracket out here, which has just these two bolts. And then there's one bolt here. And I think that's all that holds this one, unless there's something else underneath. No, because that's part of the bracket. By taking this out, it'll give me a, make it a lot easier to, uh, and this metal is pretty good shape. This stuff's not to do much with it, but it'll just give me a lot more room to get in here with a wire wheel without damage. I'm not taking these things out. Maybe I'll tape them off a little bit just so I don't bump them. But um, the reality is it's pretty solid around around them, so I'm not too worried about um, trying to get underneath those. We'll, uh, could be famous last words, but again, I, I just want if I can get a couple more, you know, two more seasons out of this more. If, I think I'm into it for 300 bucks or so. Um, plus, I got a, uh, that trailer that was in the other video out of it, so the uh, we'll be have done okay on it if we get a couple three seasons out of it. I guess I got half a season last year because I didn't get it until I don't know August or so. But I used it the rest of the year and for doing my leaves and everything, and had enough confidence that I sold my old uh, my old tractor, and, which also needed some work. Didn't didn't have it didn't have this issue, I don't think, but it did have other issues that needed to be fixed. So, and uh, maybe I'll treat myself to a brand new one. I've never owned a brand new one. Okay, so I got this kind of out here in the sunlight. You can kind of see what we're dealing with. The uh, so I spent about an hour using a drill with a wire cup and a kind of a I wouldn't say it's it's kind of like a medium um, roughness scraper i had my die grinder out with a with a uh, smaller cup as well um so things this kind of layers of rust right so this kind of big chunks like this have come up um obviously i've probably got at least four spots i'm gonna have to patch we'll turn around and clean up the outside any place there's bubbles in the paint i'll uh, i'll take the uh flappy disc to it but um you know basically what I've tried to do is any place the paint, I've tried to get as much of the loose paint or pot, this is probably powder coating, I would guess, off. Um, try to get as many of the big chunks of rust. I'm not going to get this perfectly clean. There's just no way. I mean, it's kind of the rust is holding it together at this point. So you can see, obviously, where we've got big holes, some small holes there, a couple holes over there. Um, so like I said, there's at least uh, there's a couple there. So there's four spots right off. Um, and then we'll see when we get to the uh, top side if anything else goes through. Once I kind of hit the big spots already, again, I'm just going to try and take the flappy disc, get any of the paint, loose paint off. Is you can almost see where the moisture has traveled, like under the, you know, you have one spot where there's a little break in the paint. 
and then you can just see lines in the metal where moisture is traveled, and then it puddles in another spot, and then that's where you end up with a blister under the paint. So lots of lots of blisters under the paint and under the decals and stuff. So ground off all the decals that were holding water and rusting underneath. And so I'm hoping we just have enough metal to weld to. I'm not a welder. I've never welded stuff this thin. This is you know, this is eighth inch, about eighth inch, um, but probably thinner in spots from being um, stamped. Um, it's got, I'm using a 16 gauge to patch because that's what I could find at Tractor Supply. Um, it's the 22 gauge seems too thin. Um, probably a harder the weld, although it'd be a lot easier to get form to shape the, the uh, it forms the shape pretty easily actually, but the uh, 16 gauge is a little tougher, but and this, unfortunately almost every patch is going to have to be a curve. So anyways, you can kind of see it's, you know, I got, you know, see a little shininess coming through in spots, but you know, and then like a lot of this, this thick stuff here will get cut out um, because it's pretty crusty on top. So I'll probably end up cutting good uh, patching probably back to here on that. Um, again, get a couple years, all this thing. What I'll do is I've got some, it's Eastwood chassis black primer that I've got left over from when I did the F100 frame. So I'm going to put a coat of that over both sides of this mower deck. And then I'll put it, I got a coat of the, you know, satin finish, um, chassis black, uh, that I'll put on here or that. Maybe I'll see if I've got some, or if I'll go pick up a thing of rust only, I don't know, but probably just use what I have and just put a coat, good coat of paint on both sides and then hopefully put this thing back together and get a couple more years out of it. Didn't disassemble it completely. I still left a lot of the mechanism on. Fortunately, it's pretty solid up around the, uh, the mechanisms. There's not real thick rust there. Um, so the, uh, few spots off to move some stuff around probably on the top side so the wind's probably getting picked up in the foam but the uh so we're getting there it's uh it's not gonna be pretty that's for sure but let's try to keep it functional for a couple more seasons okay so we just got uh done grinding up so you know most of the spots you know are pretty solid you know there's some rust all these areas these just need to be painted we got most of the rust off, got loose paint off. So first bad spot is here. You can see we got some good metal down here. So I cut out the little bracket. I think that bracket is, I don't, I've never used it. So I think it's for the uh, rear, rear mounted grass catcher. But uh, I'm going to try and put that back on. So first thing we probably have to do is put a new lip on this edge here. So we got some good metal up here. And down here so we should be able to do that this will be the hardest one because it's just the biggest and it's gonna really we're gonna have to end up cutting out all the way up to here but i'm gonna leave this shape here so i can kind of get the new piece shaped does it sound like i know what i'm talking about because i don't um and then obviously so i'm thinking i don't know i'm gonna see if i can do one piece i don't know if i'll be able to form it enough um but we'll see so, you know what kind of skills i have here then we'll have to do a little strip here just to kind of fill that hole. The rest of this is pretty solid. And then we got a couple holes here, so we'll put a little patch here. Um, right, it's a real small one, actually, right around this area. And then uh, up here, everything was solid. All good. This is all solid. Um, so the next spot is here where we got, it's coming through pretty good spots. So we'll probably end up cutting out. I don't know, three, four inch square here, putting a new piece in. Um, and then over here is the, probably the second worst spot. Again, um, it's pretty solid up on top, so we won't have to go too far, but we'll at least have to go up to the top of this curve and here, and uh, we'll end up cutting, cutting some of this out and patching a new piece in. So I, I don't know if I'll patch right over it, Probably better to cut it out. That's what I'm thinking. Um, we'll kind of get the new piece uh, kind of fitted up, and then we'll see. We'll probably just end up cutting it out, I guess. We'll see. See how it goes. But that was it. Everything else was pretty much. This is just stuff that needs to be painted. Front or the rear edge is pretty clean. Um, I got down in here and got some of the uh, little crustiness. 
out of some of this. I mean, it still looks a little rusty, but I got the thick crustiness out. Um, I have a finger sander, air sander, or gray. It was just perfect to get into that, those areas. Um, so we're going to uh, start cutting up some metal. I started working on the first patch, so kind of put it in the vise and just kind of kept moving it and hitting it with a five pound hammer and kind of got to, it's got the right curve of the deck here. And then what I'm trying to do is go from about here, where we got some good metal up to about here where we got some good metal. So tempting to do it with one piece, trying to get the, uh, now kind of curve it. So I've started kind of, I put a couple cuts in there just to make this a little easier to bend and then we'll have to kind of pie cut the center one. Um, but it's starting to kind of work the, uh, the obviously I have a long way to go to get the this bent over enough. Um, so we got to really work on this, this uh, joint right here. Probably actually have it bent too much at the top, but we can straighten that out and just kind of work on getting this uh, cut right so it follows the shape of the deck and then uh, see how that goes. And then what we'll do is when we weld, we'll just weld up the joint between these fingers. Um, so we'll kind of keep plugging away at it. Here's the first patch and kind of see it is use the uh, death wheel and uh, a vise and some channel locks and kind of bent it to shape so it kind of fits pretty pretty good and then what we'll do is we'll end up kind of tacking it down hammering it down a little bit more and then then we'll kind of cut out around it and then weld it in place hey obviously have the pie cut i'm going to see if i can do it a little differently on the other side <clears throat> um, so I'll weld these seams up as I weld it, theoretically. So I think we're going to, just to make us feel good about accomplishing something, we're going to do these, cut the patches for these couple little spots first. Those will be pretty straightforward. And then uh, this one, I guess, will be a little hard because it's on the round edge, but we'll figure that out. And then, uh, again, not going for pretty here. And then we'll, once we get that one, then we'll probably work on getting this one, whatever we're going to do here, mocked up. So we're going to have to, thinking about just doing like one strip down the side. This one's pretty solid on top. And then another one that just covers this edge, which is trying to high cut this all the way around like I did that one. But I'm not sure yet. Might try that on this one and see how it goes. And then when we get to this side, we're going to do it in two pieces. I think we're going to do a new piece that's going to run down here and make this edge for it where the uh, chute goes. And then once we have that done, then we'll put a new piece on the side. Yeah, we got some good metal down here. We'll cut this out across. Make a new piece that comes around. And then another piece that will kind of cut out this whole top section well to, uh, to this here. So. That's the plan. Okay, so show you what tools I'm using. Basically, using a five pound, I think it's a five pound, maybe it's a three pound, but sledge, air channel locks. This is the piece I just I just formed. Um, you know, not perfectly round, but it forms to the kind of gets the right pattern. It sits nice and flush against the deck. So, um, and then I'm using a couple of basically in the vise, and then a couple of dollies for uh, body work. And the I mean. This is cheap, cheap stuff. I mean, this is 1980s Gibraltar Trade Center, cheap China tools. So this isn't even like high quality China tools you get from Harbor Freight today. This is this is 19, uh, 1980s uh, Gibraltar Trade Center, which if you're from Detroit, you'll get that. If not, you probably won't. But um, that's all I'm doing. So I'm kind of putting in the vise and, you know, using the back of the... the Put the dolly up against it and hammer it out a little bit just to get the bends. Try to get them fairly straight. But if we walk over here, you know, I think it's, again, good enough. Not going for uh, pretty. So put that on there. And it sits nice and flush. That we can get a good beat around that and call it done. So this is the piece that we're going to do next to the chute. So I, I kind of cut, cut it out of a piece of uh, thin piece of cardboard. Because I knew it was going to have kind of a dog leg angle to it. Um, 
And then this is kind of what we ended up with and how that goes. We'll end up cutting this bad stuff out here. This will sit basically right there. And create a new lip of this. And then we, I cut it back at the top edge here so I can try and weld it on both sides. I'm hoping there'll be enough for it to grab metal, good metal there. But kind of tack it at the top around there, tack it down here at the bottom, and then we'll have a nice clean new uh, new edge there. And then when we do our repairs here, we'll be able to connect right into this piece. All right, so we've got this piece kind of made. It needs, still needs a little trimming, but this is going to fit basically in here. We'll have to trim that a little bit. Uh, well, and once we kind of tack it, we'll bend this tab. Um, and then we're gonna then bring off kind of a flat piece out from the top here, just to kind of meet this. It seems to be about the neatest way to do this. So we got that piece made. We'll make the top piece once we got this one kind of in place. Um, that way we can get kind of final measurements and we'll finish cutting out this bad stuff at the top here. We got this one here, ready to go there. This one here, ready to go there. We got this one we did the pie cuts on yesterday that it's gonna go right in this area. And then this one, same thing here, I'm gonna, we will get this bottom part tacked in and then we'll bring an, another piece that'll kind of come from here and meet up at the top of this one. So we won't have quite the, the round edges that we have there, but I don't think that's really necessary. So I think what we're gonna do is get this thing over on the welding bench and start trying to uh, tack some of the stuff in place. And a few of these will tack and then we'll back cut and. Um, like this one here, I'll probably cut out some of this before I even start welding. Oops. You can see how I made that, just put it in the vise and kind of kept using the dolly to bend it. Not perfectly smooth, but I don't have like the fancy uh, tools to, to do this stuff. Just using what I got. And again, for this uh, type of purpose, it should be plenty good enough. Okay, right, so we kind of started tacking some of this in. So I got this piece tacked in a couple spots. It's ugly, but it's holding. Um, so that kind of gives us this edge that from the factory edge there. And then we'll uh, end up putting in a piece here and then we'll cut out the rest of this rod up here and uh, hopefully kind of get this one piece. These two are kind of ugly. I blew through in a couple spots, which is my fear with this thing because this deck is so thin in spots. So I'm gonna have to try and either put another little patch there or Filled with weld, I'm not sure, but it seems to be holding. Um, and then I kind of just started to tack this one up. This one, I plan to back cut this one and um, and then kind of weld the piece in and get rid of all the rot. So anyway, it's kind of tacked in. I just kind of adjusted the clamp so I can make sure I got a you know pretty close connection. We're just going to keep plugging away here. Okay, so we got this side piece tacked. I'm pretty happy with this one, how it's turning out. Just kind of start, you know, put little tack welds. Um, again, this metal is pretty thin and, and this deck is pretty crusty underneath. So I've blown through it a couple spots. But this one, I had a setting wrong on the, I didn't have it on auto. And sometimes I use it on auto settings, sometimes I don't. And also the gas pressure was turned up too high. So some, I'm blaming some of my really crappy welds initially on that. But these ones, these ones are okay so far. And what I'm gonna do is I'll just gonna make, I'll probably cut this back a little more and I'll make a little filler piece that'll, that'll go in here. And then we're gonna call this side good once we, well obviously we'll finish spot well that. This one's a complete cluster. Um, kept blowing through, but now I've redone the settings. It's, I've been able to kind of start filling in these gas. We'll have to do a lot of grinding on this one, but um, I think we'll, I don't think, this one I took out, I tacked it in place over top of the old one. This is the old piece that came out of here. Um, and then I cut it back at a 45 degree angle and the new piece pretty much fit right in. So kind of a technique I've learned on uh, watching a couple of other YouTubers, uh, mostly uh, Fitzy's, was it Fitzy's Garage? Fitzy's Fabrications, I think. 
Um, guy's really, really talented with just basic tools, um, showing you how to do a lot of metal work. So give him credit for what I learned here. Um, but anyways, so I'm pretty happy with this. Seems to be pretty good. This one's, I'm not going to do the back cut and cut out the bad stuff. It didn't have as much rot here. I'm just going to, I think, finish welding this up and grind it smooth and call this one good. Um, this one, these are all the ones I did early on when I didn't have the settings right. Um, keeps blowing holes there. So I'm going to actually cut, cut in a little piece of metal and kind of put over that one to get to try to get that to some some thicker steel. This one needs a couple more tack, tack welds and and it was just one little hole that was covering. Not a big deal. This one seems to be secured. Um, again, it's a little ugly, but it seems nice and solid. So that'll give us something to weld to. Then when we cut, I've got this piece cut to go here. We'll have to trim it a little bit. But basically, this piece is going to come in here. We'll have to trim some corners. That's going to go in there. Weld to that piece. And then we will, uh, again, make a cutout. Pretty good section. This will be up probably about like there. And then we're going to cut out a pretty good section of this, probably back to about here. Try and save that hole if we can, just to line up those parts when they go back in. But get all this rod out of here and cut it back, probably all the way, maybe even all the way back to this piece that we put in. And then, uh, good. So we're making progress. It's slow. I'm slow. But it's going to work. I think we're going to have a mower deck that's not going to have grass shooting out holes anymore. So that should be good. And hopefully get a couple more years out of it. Okay, so we got the uh, this piece all stitched in. Um, need to obviously grind the welds down, and then we'll make a piece. They'll go here. I might have to cut this down a little bit. We'll make a piece. They'll just basically fill in right there, and then that side will be done. Actually, this one's. I mean, it's ugly, but once you grind the welds down, it'll be okay. I got all the. I was able to fill all the holes, so it's. Uh, I think uh, to the point where you take a hammer to it, it won't fall off. These ones are again ugly, um, but I had to put that actual patch because I kept burning through here, so I had to get to some better metal. And then uh, just stitch this one on. So just got it tacked on and just cut out the rust on top. And so what we're gonna do then is tomorrow, I'll again, probably have to trim this lip down, kind of cut a piece to fit here and see what it looks like. And then um, trim this edge and then basically tack I go back to this new metal I put in here and uh, what we're going to do here, fulfill that. We'll figure it out. But uh, coming around, so I got probably just in shaping, cutting, and welding. Probably eight hours today. Again, I'm, I'm slow, so it takes me a while, but um, probably a couple more hours to finish these last two pieces up and fill in a couple gaps that I missed. And it's going to probably take, I don't know, an hour or so with the flappy wheel, and then we'll probably have to go touch up a few spots. And it's going to be a little ugly, but it'll be functional, and I won't have grass. Uh, rocks flying out through the holes in the mower deck anymore so and we should be good for a couple more years so we've cut the piece that's going to go here um to fill this top so it's going to kind of fit in place kind of like that still working on trying to get the corners kind of bent down got this kind of ground down so it kind of matches let's tuck there and we'll weld this seam probably grind it down a little bit more there um and uh Getting close. And then I've got a piece cut for the other side. Still need to shape it, but just like a three inch by six inch piece that's going to eventually sit down in here, shape it to get the right fit. But uh, so we don't need to go back that far, but we should be getting pretty close. So one last thing I almost forgot there's this little bracket that uh, goes on the uh, side of the mower deck that is probably, I think it helps connect the, uh, if you have the chute on the, for the bag rear bagging and uh so i'd cut it off the rusted area and just welded it back i'd taken a couple of measurements and pictures of where it was compared to the bottom rail and to the opening of the chute and tried to get pretty close so after we kind of did a light sanding 
took and wiped it down with some of this DupliColor cleaner. It just kind of gets all any wax or grease uh, residue off. And now we're going to start throwing a coat of uh, primer on here, and uh, hopefully it sticks. Okay, guys, there's the mower deck installed. Um, See, I already used it once. It's covered with grass already, but, uh, you know, so far it uh, seems to be holding up okay. No issues. Did have to adjust it once I installed it just to get the uh, the height correct. Um, it's a couple different ways that I do. First, you do the left to right, which is done using these guys here. And I did have uh, different notches from left to right. Um, but it's basically those four or five. I guess it's uh, circles to choose from are the different clips or different uh, spacing for the left to right balance. And then there's an adjuster right there that's used for the adjusting of the front to rear, as well as these ones here on the front. And I just took a little playing around with the tape measure um, to get it so it was you know, basically when it leveled to maybe three sixteenths of an inch down in the front and even side to side and took a little playing around, but uh, so far it seems to be holding up good. Uh, but anyways, thanks for watching and appreciate it. And uh, please like and subscribe to the channel.